Okay, welcome again, my friends. And, uh, today, we will uh, continue to share our topic about the diffuse parenchymal lung disease, and uh, we will look about the classification of these diseases, how they are classified. But let's have a short recap uh, on this uh, diagram that's in on this uh, presentation. All right, these are air sacs. These are air sacs and the air sacs. And uh, these, uh, which are large one, these are blood vessels. And this one, which is just like a pearl one, and this is what's called the uh, interstitium of the of the lungs. And we know that uh, usual air it gets in and then go out uh, from the air sacs. And uh, another concept is that there is a tendency of the exchange of air between the blood vessels and the lungs and that's why we say the lungs are the site of the shall exchange because uh, once the blood comes here is deoxygenated and uh, we know that there is oxygen in these lungs so it means the oxygen is to diffuse and to go into the lungs in order to uh, turn the deoxygenated blood into oxygenated one and therefore uh, the carbon dioxide will be removed from the blood and go outside so once uh, from uh, our topic, once a uh, scarring or fibrosis and inflammation occur, it means these are interstitium of the pulmonary uh, will be sinking. I uh, will see that we uh, see that the, the, there will be a sinking, and uh, we know that all of the uh, uh, interstitium lying in the air sacs uh, is thin, is thin one. So once uh, so, uh, someone has. Uh, uh, fibrosis uh, in the interstitium of the lungs there will be a sickening of these of this uh, part and therefore this will restrict the diffusion of oxygen from the air sacs into the blood and even sometimes uh, carbon dioxide we, it will be difficult to be ex to be uh, diffusing from the blood vessels into the into the lungs. That's so it means that the fibrosis affects the whole process of uh, gaseous exchange. This was a short recap. And I uh, uh, let's come on our uh, session today about uh, the classification of the uh, diffuse parenchymal lung diseases. Uh, you have to know that the classification of these diseases is. Uh, based etiological it means it depends on what is the cause of the uh, diffuse parenchymal lung disease uh, from the previous uh, sessions uh, it's for the session two we have seen about the etiologies associated with a uh, diffuse uh, parenchymal disease we have seen there are uh, occupational and environmental factors uh, we have seen there are uh, some of medication uh, some of, uh, of antibiotics some of the infection like tuberculosis and pneumonia also some of the drugs that are used to treat heart arrhythmias so these are associated which are associated with uh, diffuse uh, parenchymal uh, lung disease so these uh, factors are highly reliable during the classification of these uh, diffuse parenchymal lung disease and these therefore make the etiologic classification to fall under two groups which is the environmental causes and the associated disease. It means uh, someone has underlying disease that will cause damage to the interstitial parts of the of the lungs, and therefore undergo scarring. Uh, therefore, what consequently uh, someone got a uh, interstitial lung disease. And let's go. Uh, and now we are going to look one after another. Let's start uh, with the uh, etiologic classification, etiologic cause based on the environmental factors. It means uh, we know that environment uh, is the total surroundings of one uh, organism. Uh, it's a place where an organism uh, dwell. Uh, so the total surroundings of an organism, including air, water, uh, everything that an organ that surround an organism what's called environment so the environment can expose someone uh, to these to the harmful uh, or materials that will will uh, cause someone to get these disease and uh, under these environments uh, causes we have uh, occupational environmental exposures 
occupational or environmental exposures and the inhaled substance. It means uh, occupational, we talk about the, the work someone is doing and environmental, someone, just like a, so, uh, where someone is dwelling. So according to these two factors, we, 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 we relate what is the inherent substance from the environmental occupations, suppose in mining, suppose in industry, someone where is exposed to asbestos, uh, uh, and in mining, someone is exposed to dust, yeah. So we, we, we classify the inhaled substance and the, how these inhaled substance will affect the lungs of uh, an individual. Let's look, let's look about the inorganic dust. Inorganic dust, that is the dust that contain inorganic materials. It means it contain the elements that, are no, that do not contain carbon, eh? that, are no, that are not made up of carbon compounds. For example, silica, silicates, uh, in bracket uh, asbestos, metallic, hard metal, and beryllium. So this inorganic dust has a tendency, if someone will be exposed to these, uh, to these uh, environments that contain the silica, silicates, hard metal, and beryllium, will likely to develop uh, diffuse parenchymal lung disease. Uh, because these uh, once they go into the lungs once when 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 they when they diffuse from the air sacs in and uh, to in, into the bloodstream they will meet with the interstitial part of the lungs and when they meet this interstitial once they cause damage or inflammation and therefore if scarring up if the scarring appear in these parts therefore someone will experience what you call a fibrosis I think you you, you got me while there also, on the case of organic dust, it means the dust that contains uh, organic materials. Uh, for example, here uh, we find the dust, con some, someone inhaled the dust that contains somophilic bacteria. Uh, the damage will occur, uh, the, uh, the damage in the lung will occur. And this is obviously found in the farmers' lungs, in the lungs of those who are farmers. And we may find they inhale the somophilic bacteria. Also, for those who uh, who are people involved in livestock so keeping, for example, baits, yeah, you may find that they they they, they inhale the animal proteins from the uh, from the bait droppings, yeah, and they, for example, when you look up at the bait defense your lungs, you may find the organic dust. Also, uh, in this uh, case, you may find someone inhale chemicals, uh, gases, vapors. Fumes and the radiations, which uh, these uh, go to the uh, lungs and they damage the interstitial parts of the lung. As so a let looks on uh, the drugs and the poison induced, it means that there is a, someone has been induced to see a drugs or poison. But uh, suppose that someone has a disease and uh, we want to cure the disease. We use drugs. Sometimes these drugs are so affectious to the lungs, they are so toxic to the lungs. Or sometimes you may if someone else uh, ingested poison, or wow, this is so toxic to the lungs. Let's start with chemotherapy. When you say chemotherapy, you mean that these uh, include the chemotherapeutic drugs that are used in in the reduction of the severity of the cancers. So these drugs, when they use, some of drugs uh, can cause uh, damage to the interstitial lining the, lining the lungs. For example, basulfan, bromycin, methotrexate, rituximab, and saridomide. These are drugs that are highly uh, toxic to the, to, the, to the lungs. And also there are some of the antibiotics which are so uh, toxic to the lungs and then can cause a scarring in the interstitium of the lungs, like a nitro and and sarazine. These are drugs that are likely to be more toxic to the lungs. And also we have both kinamide, uh, which cause drug-induced lupus. Wow, this is all because of drug-induced lupus. And also, sometimes mis may, maybe misrenas, uh, for example, amiodarone, Amiodarone, this is drug used uh, in the treatment of, of 
to hurt your uh, as well as uh, propaganda as we have seen from the etiologies associated with say, the with this diffuse uh, parenchymal lung disease, amiodarone or propanol, which is I use this much in the treatment of uh, in the treatment of uh, heart arrhythmia. So once in these are used, they can cause uh, damage uh, to the to the interstitial lining the lining the 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 pulmonary air yeah, sacs. Therefore, and uh, continue on a uh, uh, theologic classification. Uh, uh, now we discuss about the associated disease. It means uh, someone has underlying the um, disease, which uh, this disease uh, can cause the damage to the to the interstitial lining, the air sacs. Uh, the the disease causes f causes scarring and then later cause uh, let's cause a uh, interstitial lung disease. You know, we will start with the connective tissue disease. It means that there are diseases that are. Uh, uh, affect the connective tissues as we have seen let let, let uh, just look here we see this one this is the connective tissue part this is the connective tissue so once uh, someone has a connective tissue disease can affect it uh, can also affect the lungs uh, interstitial for example systemic lupus erythromatous rheumatoid arthritis Systemic sclerosis, Sjogren's syndrome, and polymyositis. These are connective tissue diseases that are likely to be associated with the, uh, these diffuse parenchymal lung disease. And there are other systemic diseases that it means they affect uh, many parts of the body. For example, uh, sarcoidosis, Wegener glanomatosis, the fungitic uh, carcinomatosis and the alveolar proteinosis. Also, these uh, are likely to be associated with the damage to the interstitial uh, parts of the lungs. And uh, sometimes maybe of unknown etiology. Maybe of unknown etiology. You see? And uh, as I have said uh, in the previous session that uh, mostly the causes of, the, of these diseases are known. And uh, one of the examples of such is, is called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Due to unknown, idiopathic means unknown. So it means someone has a pulmonary fibrosis due to unknown cause. And this uh, cover a, a, a large part of these diseases. Also, there are some of the infections. Come on, maybe is an infection from the viral infection, for example, cytomegalovirus. Wow, cytomegalovirus. And the, these are cytomegalovirus. Because uh, so an individual to be prone to these uh, diseases, also bacteria infection like uh, tuberculosis, also some of the parasitic infections, and uh, also some of the of the uh, fungal infection like histoplasmosis. Now uh, these are examples of the infection that are likely to to, to cause this. Uh, scarring of the of the interstitial parts of the lungs and later someone will develop uh, the diffuse parenchyma lung disease okay thanks for listening uh brenda here when the presentation about the classification of these uh, diffuse parenchyma disease uh, and this is not at the end of our topic we will continue with our topic so what i advise you is that you don't have to for, don't uh, forget uh, to subscribe our channel in order to get more updated videos as we continue see our, our topic. Thanks and welcome again.